There we go. Good afternoon. My name is Liesel van der Westeisen, and it is my absolute privilege and pleasure to welcome you to the Kyalo May webinar on breaking unhealthy habits for a flourishing you. And I think in today's fast-paced world, it is so easy to get stuck in habits that hold us back from living our best lives. Whether it's negative self-talk or unhealthy lifestyle choices, these patterns can weigh us down and prevent us from reaching our goals. But not to worry, today's webinar is your roadmap, well, our roadmap to transformation. And it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our two, uh, our two esteemed speakers for today, Zamu Mbele and Zenze Kile Shongwe, both who has wealth of experience and expertise in the mental health field. And I'm really looking forward to the insight and the practical strategies that they are about to empower us with, to cultivate a life of purpose and fulfillment. So, um, Zamu, Zenzi, a heartfelt thank you for the privilege of your time this afternoon. Um, I am really looking forward to, to this session. Uh, so, without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you so very much, Liesl, for that incredibly warm welcome. Um, it's such an absolute pleasure and privilege to be here, not only on um, the extension of your invitation, but also um, when we were preparing for this conversation, uh, myself and Sens were so excited because of a few reasons. One of them is that we were leveraging of your own enthusiasm and excitement for this. And I just wanted everybody to, to know that because I'm not certain if they always see it. Um, it's how incredibly passionate you are and um, how yeah, you, you have an excitement and enthusiasm for these conversations. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I love working in these contexts because myself and Sens love working with people that are as passionate about the work that we do as we are, and boy, are we passionate about it. My name is Zamon Belli. I'll do a very brief introduction and allow, allow my colleague, Senzi, to introduce herself. Though, while we're doing that, to everybody joining us, you can also join in, let us know who's here. Um, I see a few people have joined in the chat, so you can um, wave, you can say hello, you can tell us um, who you are, you can tell us a little bit about yourself, you can also, Tell us what it is that you're looking forward to, why you've joined us today, what your understanding is of the conversation that we're going to be having. And if you have any questions, then please do pop it in the chat. We are going to be doing, um, we're going to be speaking to myself and Senzo in the profession of listening. So please feel free to interrupt at any point. I am a clinical psychologist and clinical advisor and consultant um, at October Health and I've worked uh, with mental health mostly clinically face-to-face -face for very many years and was very excited to be given an opportunity to try and work with mental health at a scalable um, place and, and in a scalable way through October Health. And never have I come across um, an initiative and a movement that is built for most everybody on this call today, the working well, or most of us who are carrying on with it, which is work and life, which is so difficult and is so demanding. And we also need some sort of support. And we know that proactive support is the way to go. Um, and that's why we're having this conversation. Um, Senza Gile, do you want to say hello? I'm so glad you're joining us. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Zamo. I am very excited to be here. And yes, exactly. Liesl's energy is just amazing. And, you know, with just having the conversation with the both of you, I felt quite excited to be in here, especially talking about, you know, habits, something that we all do, something that we all have, but we hardly ever internalize how it could help or even harm us. So I'm very excited to have this conversation. And just to echo Zamo, uh, we are in the business of listening. So if you want to share some of your uh, good and bad habits on the chat, please do and let us make this an interactive conversation. And let's have fun more than anything. I like to say let's have fun in these seemingly serious conversations um, and let us all learn from each other. And hopefully... By the end of this discussion, we will all pick up some healthy habits from one another 
we will help each other realize some of the bad habits that might need to be changed or altered just a little. Um, I am a counselor by profession and I work for Amazing October Health um, as a community manager there. And I love, love, love um, mental health education and providing support. It is my dream. It is my livelihood. It's who I am. If you look at Zen Zen, you think of Zen Zen, you think of mental health and mental wellness. Um, so if you do have any, any contributions in this conversation, you have got the right people to help you um, in this journey. Thank you so much, Zama. Over to you. I mean, I think to some extent I can start by saying, you know, we really should have the, make these conversations a habit. And I, I, I'm i kind of starting there because I'd wondered if a lot of people or how many people <clears throat> are aware of what habits are, how they're formed, how do we understand habits? I think a lot of us will speak about habits without really having contemplated them. We're going to be thinking about the habits that we have, how we form them, but we're also going to be doing that in the direct context of how do these habits contribute to burnout and what habits can we implement that might help or prevent burnout? So let's start with habits. We'll go into burnout as we're doing that. Um, and since, I mean, we have obviously prepared for the session, we're kind of cheating. So I want to ask everybody else, let us know in the chat, what do you understand about habits? What are your habits? How do you imagine they formed? Have you ever thought this deliberately about it? Are habits a good or a bad thing? Have you ever struggled to form habits? Are you good at forming habits? Are you good at breaking habits? So let's engage in the chat and think a little and a lot about it. It might sound like something very simple, though uh, who we are, and now I'm paraphrasing, who we are is a series and a collection of habits. Ooh. Who we are is a series and a collection of habits. It's something that I listen to, to try and bring the importance to habits. What is it that I'm doing? that I am aware of and not aware of every day again and again that is actually forming um, or contributing to who it is that I am. And for me, that is both in terms of professionally, habitually, I like to inform myself. And like you, since I like to use whatever information I have to um, bring mental health education everywhere. That That's my professional habit. Um, and personally, I love to spend time with family. So, um, and, you know, whether that's kind of in meals or um, on occasions. So from those habits, I see myself as um, a clinical psychologist and the educator of wellness, as well as a father and a husband. And those are how I go from what it is that I do to who it is that I am. And this way of beginning made me appreciate that this is not a small conversation. It's incredibly important. I see a lot of some people have already started joining us and typing. I'm so glad. Priya writes, um, habits, before I go to you, Priya, Neil writes, we are creatures of habits. Lovely. Well said. We fall into a trap where we prefer to go with what is comfortable for us, but not necessarily what is yeah. best. Just to pause there. I think what you're doing, Neil, is you're saying habits are unavoidable. So this is important. We must pay attention to it. We're creatures of habit. There's something instinctual. And I think you speak of, you're warning us, habits can be something that we need to look out for because they can feed self-sabotage, resistances, and things that are not good. And we'll get into that. Priya writes, habits, uh, habits that we develop ourselves, but I think it must always uh, be adaptable to change, I think it is. Absolutely. Inflexible habits are no good for us at all, nor for the environment that we find ourselves. Do you have a flexibility to the way that you engage habits? Melissa January, thank you for writing. Habits is what you learn to either help you or harm you, protect you, and some are there to make you cautious. My view on habits. Brilliant. Very thorough. And I wanted to pick something else from what Melissa writes, which is how do we learn them? And this I put to everybody and already making a point, paying attention to the habits that you learn consciously most of us are taught to brush our teeth. That's a conscious habit that we learn. So then we have so many unconscious habits that we perform and repeat. Great. Thank you, Melissa. Um, I read somewhere it takes 21 days to form a habit. Um, I think that most of us will rely on that. I, for one, have never made it to 21 days. I'm kidding. Though I think that that's, <laughs> it certainly takes repetition and discipline. And I think for, for me, that's what 21 days is. 
What is your 21 days? What's your period of repetition? And what's your dedication to a commitment that requires discipline? What is your 21 days in trying to form your habit? Um, and, and 21 days will look different for different people. I, I'm still going to go, um, I'm looking forward to tips that will help come uh, with the habits. I'll definitely go into those. Uh, we form our habits, then habits form us. Beautiful, Rodney, and also kind of pulling attention to the fact that these aren't simple things. They can have a huge impact. Um, small habits for healthy routines, so very important. Um, and we will speak a lot more uh, about habits. I wanted to maybe read the last two, Ryogazi and Joanne. Um, habits are made of good and bad ones, sometimes destroying our lives completely, unable to, to live with them. It's a collection of so many things that make us who we are today, absolutely. Um, and then the last one is habits can be quick to create, but it does take 21 days to break a habit. We'll speak in the conversation today around which habits are helpful and which are not. Um, those in the I've invited um, everybody joining us to to contribute on their thoughts around what are habits have you thought of them are you mm -hmm. committed and deliberate about habits or is it something that has been going on kind of in the background of your life yeah. to quote somebody from our conversation today that really informed the foreground of your livelihood tell us what you think yeah. then i think lisa you also wanted to say something go for it yeah. zamo as you're speaking and reading the comments i'm i'm actually thinking to myself Am I who I am because it's my inner traits or is it because of everything that I've learned through my own habits, but also habits of people around me? Because whether we like it or not, the people that you spend time with influence who you become, how you think, what you do. And oftentimes we go on and on and on and we find ourselves in certain situations, in certain places, how we grow up, who we grow up with, and that cultivates who we then become. It isn't something that I'm always conscious about. Actually, when I start to um, invest time and energy and thought into a habit, it becomes anxiety provoking. And I think this happens to a lot of people. And then you end up feeling like you have failed at it because you don't reach your 21 days. Um, for some people, they say 60 days to build a habit. The numbers just keep going on. But for a lot of people, Zamo, building a habit is can be anxiety provoking can seem to not be easy and sometimes it is easier to have a character and develop a character based on habits that you really don't think through about like brushing your teeth we were taught to brush our teeth and it's it's a norm you know i wouldn't look at brushing my teeth as a habit but i'd look at something that i just do and a lot of who we are comes from what we just do and i think to be honest for me you know quite a lot of me is based on that you know my upbringing the people i surround myself with and sometimes where life throws um you know me too and some of the things that life throws at me and then that just cultivates into a habit you know i was saying to you um earlier that i have a bad habit of not eating breakfast i don't remember a time where i thought Senzi, you're not going to eat breakfast for 21 days. I just stopped eating breakfast and it, 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 it just worked out for me. And eating breakfast is actually strange and weird. And when I think to myself, let me commit to eating breakfast for a week, I even feel sick. You know, I feel bloated and I feel, and that it could be very mental. So what I'm trying to say is that it's very important to be conscious of our habits, um, to understand why we do certain things. But I appreciate that it could be anxiety provoking. It could be very uncomfortable because with asking yourself those questions, sometimes they might come that you actually have to start changing or you have to do things differently. And sometimes it could be, oh, actually, this is a good one and I should be more intentional about it. I think that what Senzi and myself have wanted to do in introducing this conversation is that we need to punctuate from the importance of habits, understanding them, knowing how they are everywhere. And at the same time, they actually do take a lot of thinking and deliberateness in order to, to yeah. engage. And perhaps you will be as surprised as I think I was when I was preparing for this conversation that we habits are everywhere. Habits are the daily makeup you know, of our lives, though we rarely think of them until now. And one of the um, insights that we wanted to share today is the deliberateness of being aware, not only of the importance or of the everyday assiduous nature of habits, to then potentially um, paying as much importance to it 
Sinzigile encourages us to begin by reflecting um, on what it is that we're doing in order to understand our habits. And one of the first takeaways that I've prepared is a conversation around, do you even know what habits are or do you have to look at what it is that you're doing? Where can you find your habits, right? A lot of people would imagine that they know their habits. So actually, if you look at your behavior, what it is that you repeat, what it is that you're doing and you're not doing, the people that you're with, how you're with people, how you're with yourself, that is where you would find your habits. Especially because it's very, it can be very uncomfortable, as you were saying, since to look for for your habits. They are everywhere. I mean, I was thinking about um, one of the more common habits would be not only to brush your teeth and to have coffee. And I've bumped into a quote that says, "I'm not a co- I'm not addicted to coffee. We're just in a committed relationship." Mm-hmm. And there you kind of see the sense that it it can be every day, and you can struggle to see that it's habitual. And I yeah. also pulled up a, a more um, um, I suppose elaborate uh, um, quote on habits to speak mm-hmm. about how it is in everything. Mm-hmm. And this is by Mahatma Gandhi, begin quote, your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your mm-hmm. habits become your values, your values become your destiny. And I thought it was quite helpful to start all the way from the idea of a cup of coffee and you not paying attention to that can be a habit, right? So that's very difficult to see. So actually, your habits are in the small things that become the big thing like a destiny um, that you do and you practice. What a sober reminder of the importance of paying attention to habits so that we can better understand them and better explore them for our own help recognizing the habits that we didn't know and understand or categorize as habits because they were just things that we did or just things that we didn't. And also recognizing how much of an impact they play in our lives. They define, as I began, not only who you are, though really they can shape where it is that you're going. And it's so incredibly important um, of a place to be. Mm. I want and- Go ahead, Sense. Mm. Sorry, um, it sounds to me like you're almost saying we can change our habits, right? But also with habits being who we are, does that mean also we can change who we are? Because a lot of times, you know, because we live in a society with other people, we might say to people, but this is just who I am. You know, this is just how I do things. And we are comfortable with that. And therefore, we would love for other people to be comfortable with that as well. But it it almost means from what you're saying that, you can change some of the who you are types of, um, you know, um, I'd say habits, but some, some some of the things that you say or how you say them or things that you do and how you do them. And that you shouldn't always just accept that this is who I am. Without a shadow of a doubt. And I think that part of the reason we engage in this process and in these conversations is so that people can find something helpful and hopeful. And hope yeah. comes in the idea that something will change, something will shift. And um, what you're saying, which is an important takeaway, is that habits can feel so intimidating because they're all of who we are and Mm. they're so big and they're formed by these little things. But actually, we can find comfort in knowing that they are formed by these little things. And as a result, in order to change the situation, who we are, who we've known ourselves to be, et cetera, and so on and so forth, may be very possible if we break it down to these more little, little things, these daily things, these momentary things that we can better understand. So I just wanted to also very briefly mention a few things, uh, maybe six, to better understand habits, and then we're going to go into the um, stopping and starting of them. How many of us understood or knew that habits are autonomic? You know, they're things that we perform with very little awareness. They're repetitive. The things that we do again and again and again, they um, have a trigger response association. So habits are oftentimes triggered by a specific cue. You don't even know that it's happening. You know, you wake up, you look at, you have a habit of looking at your phone. It's just that you open your eyes and then you reach out for it. And the trigger is opening your eyes. They are goal orientated. And I'll come back to this in a second. While habits may have, um, uh, may serve different options, they actually are there to serve a goal. Some of them in your favor and some of them not so much in your favor. 
Mm-hmm. And the tricky thing about habits is that they can also be incredibly resistant to change. I mean, it's quite a, I thought, quite a, a, a thorough definition or understanding um, about habits. Have you ever thought about it in that way in particular sense? Yes, exactly that, you know, especially, and I put it down here from what you said that, you know, habits are repetitive and sometimes it's linked to goal setting. And I must be honest, habits is something that, and I, I mentioned this before, it's something that I've never spent time thinking about as a, as a person. But I do agree that it is quite something that we have to look at as a repetitive thing because when you repeat something on a regular basis you almost become accustomed to it and it becomes who you are and that is why it's important to always look at it and think is this what I want to keep doing Um, or is this something that I'd like to stop I think stopping and starting is such a difficult thing Uh, in different ways. We're going to get into that. Let's go into the chat and see what people have been thinking, saying, and reflecting on um, as we've been, as we've been speaking. Melissa, it's like some habits are safety nets. Absolutely. You know, the habit most South Africans will be familiar with. Did you, did you lock the door? Did you close the windows? Um, Mm -hmm. Are absolutely safety nets. And, and I see Melissa, you've also written about um, exercise is an anxious habit. And I want to pause there just to say, I think that habits and exercise can actually help with anxiety. Now let's unpack that a little bit. Most of us may actually have the habit of indulging anxiety. What does that mean? How many people find themselves, remember I said habits can be autonomic, without failure at a certain time in the day, oftentimes at the end of the day when you're going to sleep, or at the beginning of a period where you don't have anything in front of you, like a Friday, Mm -hmm. where you find yourself indulging the habit of worrying, of thinking, of being Mm -hmm. preoccupied, of Mm -hmm. getting into things, right? The exercise of habit. How many people are familiar with the exercise of habit? Mm -hmm. Uh, um, um, One way to put it comes from a bit of a comical um, attempt to say, you know, we do things that are habitual, that are not good for us. And the question is, two people are um, ending work and the others, you know, they're asking each other, so what are you going to do? And the one says, well, you know, I'll probably pick something up on my way home, make some dinner, eat some dinner, um, shower, and then give myself about an hour to worry uh, before Mm -hmm. I go to sleep. And then the other person goes, geez, you know, you leave your worrying at the end. I like to (laughs) worry all the way until I get home. By the time I get home, I've I've done all of my all of my worrying, and it's out the way. Yeah. <laughs> and then it goes to speak about how we can make worrying an exercise, as opposed to using exercise to help us about with our worry. And we, particularly at October Health, know how helpful it can be to engage in physical activity to form mm-hmm. and to practice that exercise actually mm-hmm. as a habit to help you with your worry, because it's been proven again and again the absolute impact and help of physical activity in anxiety. So instead of exercising, instead of worrying to exercise, exercise to exercise for worry, instead of actually creating a habit where worrying is like an exercise, it's something that you set time apart for unconsciously. Instead, set time apart for something more deliberate and conscious, such as physical activity, which will absolutely help you with your exercise. I don't know if that makes any sense. Since. Yes, it, it does. But it also sounds quite, you know, difficult. I think um, we are, I think anxiety and worry is very normal. It's natural. It's who we are, you know. Um, that is why it exists and it's called a disorder when it, it starts to dysfunction your life. The, the concept of setting time to worry is for me anxiety provoking thinking about it (laughs) because we worry all the time and a lot of people could attest listening in here today that while you're here you're probably thinking about something else that you need to do after this probably thinking about did i do that correctly like our minds are constantly running on the background however I'm with you, Zamo, in that we need to be deliberate. And um, Anita says we have to guard our thinking, which is something that is so crucial, Zamo, because our minds can go and wander, um, you know, in, in the way that it wants to if we don't guard our thinking, which then creates anxiety, it creates worry, um, and could lead to all forms of stress. 
if we do not guard it and if we're not careful of it. So I like that from what you're saying and as a clinical psychologist, that there is a possibility to actually said some time for worrying that it is something that's possible and you almost need to start small because i'm not going to say start you mentioned that start and stop are hard words and i agree um you, you almost have to start small and be conscious about is it necessary for me to be worried about this now you know um just like with tasks where you think okay this is not urgent i can't do it tomorrow i think with our thoughts we can do the same thing Thinking is a habit. Overthinking is a habit. And unfortunately, this habit leads to, to so many other issues, Zamo. This could be physical illness. It could be mental health related illnesses. Um, and I'm not saying it's easy for everyone or this is, is something that's easy. I appreciate that it's difficult. But to be aware is where we start. And to be intentional about our thoughts is also where we start. I think the thing about habits is that they oftentimes are formed in the absence of intentionality, yeah. especially the ones that aren't helpful. The, mm. um, the ones that are, are formed with intentionality, right? Mm. So absence of intentionality can oftentimes bring about bad habits. I wasn't intentional about um, protecting this or doing this. And in order to break those, you may equally have to be very intentional. I mean, to that extent, I'm just thinking about um, what Joanna writes over here, which is some habits are also tied with morals and have been learned of, <clears throat> from a young age. Yes. Um, and there are two things maybe I wanted to say to that. One of them is just to repeat what myself and Senzili are saying today. Habits require you to be intentional and to be deliberate and to reflect. Have an honest and a sobering look at what is it that you do that makes you who you are and what is it that you don't do that makes who who you are that you may have learned without any awareness. Mm. Well, the second thing to that particular comment that I wanted to speak about is if we think about habits in the inverse, which um, Joanna's comment allows us to, that a lot of morals, maybe even religions and certainly cultures have what we call customs or practices. You know, you do this mm -hmm. on a Friday, you do this on a Sunday, and so yeah. on and so forth. And that is an external structure that is there to help build habits. So even though I'm jumping a little bit, what it allows us to know is that building or stopping habits may need external things to help us. It may need external commitments. It may need reminders. It may need appointments. It may need scheduling until it doesn't put very differently most people would need to be told or reminded to go to a place of worship on a particular day until they just do it even without being told the external structures can really help form habits and break them what external structures do you have that is perpetuating habits and what external structures do you have or do not have that would really help in breaking or perpetuating habits, right? The second thing that comes from that comment is maybe the importance of recognizing that if somebody's helping you with your habit, you will be helped with it. So most of the, the religious kind of practices, even sports actually, that I mm. refer to, you were in a team or you were in a group of people and you were being held accountable by the fact that somebody knows that you want to practice this habit. Yeah. Who, who do you speak to that will help in the accountability of your habit? Who do you speak to? Who have you told that will ask you, how's that going, actually? Um, or that you can speak to when it's not going so well. Mm -hmm. um, and um, to that extent, I, the, the first one being, what are the external structures that are there to help you with the habit? And the second one is, and do you have external accountability partners to support the building of habits? or to break um, certain certain habits. Mm -hmm. The last thing that I wanted to say specifically from that option is oftentimes we can find good habits from good collective um, activities. What do people do that is good for them is a good question to ask. And perhaps mm -hmm. can I also do that? You know? Do people actually find it oftentimes helpful to have physical activity individually or in groups or teams? Do they find it helpful to eat healthy? What are people doing collectively that I can also borrow from um, um, as a habit? You don't have to come up with all of your habits, all of the habits all by yourself. And those are the three things that I thought um, Joanna's comment were really helpful.
external structure, accountability, and can you actually borrow um, good habits from um, what it is that you see and recognizing that these are good things around you? Um, mm. Maybe I'll pause because I've said a few things. Yeah, I, I'm wondering here, Zomo, um, what the difference between habits and addiction mm. could be, right? Because you say, you, you also also mentioned that it's things that we constantly are doing, um, and sometimes we're not intentional. And, and, and when it comes to addiction, then you become, you feel like you, you don't have control over your actions anymore. Even if you say to yourself, I'm not going to go do that, you find yourself doing that. You know, I have experienced it in, in, at a younger age where I felt like I had a food addiction. You know, um, when I say to myself that I'm not going to, you know, indulge in this, this and that, I find myself back there. And it could easily be an addiction, but it's also a mental fight um, where you, 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 you want to go this way, but you find yourself going this other way. Is this an addiction? Um, does it require a form of mental um, toughness? And I'm going to throw that back at you. Absolutely. I mean, I think what, what I might say to that is brilliant question. Um, and I think more than anything, I would, I would want us to stay with that question, right? Mm. And to almost employ it as a way of doing that reflection or looking at it that you and I started on, right? Do you ask yourself, is this a, is this a habit? Or is this an addiction? Mm. Um, and uh, the, I mean, the way that you ask it, I think is so helpful, which is, you know, what's the difference? And I would rather say, I think that there's a relationship and what's the relationship between yes. habit and mm. addiction. And I, you know, please to everybody, help us hop on the, on the chat and, and join in. My quick answer says would be, I think that habits and addictions are related in, in very many different ways. And one of the ways that they are related is that they both involve repetitive behaviors. However, I think a place where they're different is the intensity, perhaps as well as the control um, and the underlying mechanisms, particularly of it. And I'm happy to, to elaborate um, um, on it in, in particular. But if I focus specifically on the difference, because I think that this will be helpful, I think the intensity and control between habits and addiction will really help you in an honest investigation of is this helpful or not. Habits typically involve a less intense and more controllable behaviors compared to addictions. While habits may kind of be more automatic or difficult to break, individuals still remain somehow in control or aware of the fact that this is a habit or they remain aware of their behaviors Whereas in addiction, oftentimes this involves a loss of control or agency mm -hmm. or deliberateness from the individual. Mm -hmm. And they may feel a lot more compelled to engage in the behavior despite the efforts to stop. So put differently, if you ask yourself, can I stop? Not would I, can I actually stop? And have I been able to? I think you begin to differentiate between a habit and an addiction. Can I, I think the other, can I actually stop? Mm -hmm. Can I, if, you know, can I stop? I think related to that is, and should I? Mm. And should I? And one sh one can look at consequences in this regard. Yes. Because while habits may have some negative consequences, they generally have less severe that are associated than it, to addiction. And addiction oftentimes leads to a range of incredibly harmful outcomes, including health problems, legal issues, and that's when you might be thinking, geez, I would like to stop, or I need, I know, I, I know I need to stop, though I cannot. Mm -hmm. The last one would be to think a bit about the motivation. While habits are oftentimes driven by goals and preferences, and I'll speak about goals and habits in a second, or they develop out of routine. Addictions, on the other hand, are characterized by more compuls a compulsive need to engage in a behavior or to engage in a behavior because of the compulsive need of its outcome, oftentimes mm -hmm. driven by a craving of a substance or activity, as I said, regardless of its negative outcome. Mm -hmm. So I think there is such an important relationship between habits and addiction. Asking yourself that question is in and of itself great. And the mm -hmm. three particular things that you might look at is, what's the intensity and I'm in, am I in control? Does it have negative consequences? And what's driving it? What is the underlying motivation? Sure. Sure. Okay. And I think one of the biggest distinctions here is how 
to what extent can you control your mindset when you think of that thing? You know, um, and I think sometimes we misuse the words, um, um, Zamo. Sometimes you would find yourself saying, I'm addicted to chocolate, but are you really? <laughs> you know, it, it could just be a, a habit that you have developed. Yes. And, you know, you could really make some changes there if you're intentional about it. So that makes quite a lot of sense. You see, what you might find is that you might actually be addicted to sugar or the carbohydrates and the habit of eating chocolate is, is contributing to the addiction. Uh, um, and that's one way that I would speak about it. And if you want to break the addiction, you may need to change your habits. Mm. Um, and both in terms of when it is that you shop, do you always go shopping after work when we know your sugar levels are usually down and you're, gonna, you're more likely to crave for sugar mm. and your reward system is highly activated, you've had a long day at work, um, yeah. And if you can reward yourself with that chocolate, and that's the mm -hmm. habit that's fostering the addiction, something like that um, is one way that I would think about it. Yeah, something just came to my mind, Zamo, Please. that sometimes if you're wanting to be intentional about your habits, and there's some habits that you've realized that aren't so great, that you might come have to come to the realization that there's people around you and situations around you that you might have to detach from. And oftentimes that is obviously not, you know, easy for us to realize and for us to do. Um, I think there is an importance in looking at your surroundings because you might want to, you know, stop a particular habit, but because of some of the people that you always find yourself around or some spaces where you always find yourself around, you always fall back to the very same habit that you're trying to break. You're speaking about one of the points that I have around um, what can help in creating habits and what can help with stopping habits. And you, at this point, I kind of just want to say, to to segue it into, into burnout, I mean, I'm going to come back to exactly what you just said. Since it, and one of the things is we had thought, you know, there's such a link between habits and burnout because we know that burnout is not a static event. That's oftentimes trauma, right? Trauma is something happened and it disturbed or just dis destroyed something. Burnout mm. develops over time, and therefore it's very difficult to see when it started and oftentimes what caused it. And this is why we decided to include burnout in the conversation around habits. Burnout is a result of sustained habits, put mm. very, very simply. And burnout, further complicated, as a result of good, is a bad sustained habits. Burnout is a result of the sustaining of bad habits and the absence of good habits. So it's so important that we introduce burnout into this conversation. Burnout happens when over a long period of time, we do the same thing again and again and again, which is not good for us. And we don't do the same thing again and again and again, which would be good for us. And unfortunately, Sens has heard me speak about this a million times, so just bear with me. Almost like with load shedding. Mm. And it's so funny that load shedding relies on coal and electricity and the word burnout kind of yes. a thematic association. Because one of the ways that I've understood of the load shedding situation is it's a situation mm. where the habit of not doing something that would have been good, as in replenishing, regenerating, re looking after maintenance, the absence of mm. good habits for an institution, plus the presence of bad habits has led to load shedding. And for the individual on a personal level, this can also be applicable. The absence of good things, good things on a day-to-day -day basis, routine maintenance, the absence of routine maintenance can lead to burnout and the presence of something that's not good for you can also lead to burnout. Um, mm. And so while we're having this conversation, we are speaking also about how can you create or perpetuate habits that will help with burnout and how can you attempt to end or reduce habits that will um, also help with burnout. And Senzigili, you pick up on one of the things that will help with habits. Yeah. So stopping habits, things that will help with Stopping bad habits, and one of them is seeking support, surrounding yourself, so both doing, doing the both things, surrounding yourself with a support network of friends and families or professionals mm. who can offer encouragement and accountability as you work to break the habit. 
as much as surrounding yourself with the same amount of people that can help you start or perpetuate your habit. It goes back to something I was saying a little bit earlier around um, how uh, kind of uh, customary practices or religious practices can be helpful. Are yeah. you surrounding yourself with people to help you start things or to stay on track of certain things? And are you surrounding yourself with people to help you stop certain things? Mm. 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 Sure. Lovely. And I think, you know, I, I say to Elizabeth, they, they, that's a great, a, a great question because a lot of people mention this. Maybe we can tackle this um, question, Zamo, around yeah. addictive yeah. personalities, you know, um, and, and sometimes we just say I have an addictive personality, so I'm just completely going to avoid this it might be a little bit far from you know habits as a topic but i think it's worth looking at i mean one way that i think it's in if i look at it from the position of habits i think it's so helpful to know something about yourself do you get into habits very quickly and very easily which is oftentimes what i think a lot of people are referring to when they say i've got an addictive personality you know do you find that if you do something or if you even you to taste something that you 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 will repeat that um mm -hmm. a lot more often and you will um crave it and you'll want to do it again and again and that might tell you something so very helpful and interesting about you for example does it say actually you prefer certainty familiarity and that's why you prefer habits and that's why you've got an addictive personality but does it say something about your agency and um, your ability to know or imagine that you affect things as opposed to things affect you. So maybe a good place to begin in Elizabeth's question, and thank you for it, is to say, you know, engage in this question of what do you mean when you say you have an addictive personality um, can be so helpful in getting to know yourself. Now, the second thing is it's so important, especially if you want to look after yourself, if you do have an addictive personality, to be respectful. Um, of that or to know it. And when I say respectful is to have enough appreciation fearfully that actually this is who I am. And if I don't take care of this, it can have these negative consequences for mm. me. So how many people would also use that respectfully in a helpful way? If you know that you have an addictive personality, have you ever imagined to start something that you know will be good for you? Like physical exercise, or a particular eating, a way of eating, which is nutritious and, and actually good for you. Do have you in the recognition that you have a particular habit? Have you used that also? You have a particular, uh, um, it, uh, you're likely to, to start habits or you're likely to be addicted to something. Have you mm. used that to your own good? Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm aware Annelies where one has um, raised hand to speak. Um, it's now oh no I, I think i might ask lizal to help us if we can unmute um annelise way um so that they can join the conversation um, i'm having difficult oh it's, it's going yeah Oof. i don't see a now request here on my side sorry can you hear me okay. yes i can it's okay i mean i will we, we, there we go, sends us back. We'll just carry on um, speaking. Um, Elizabeth, I hope that that was in one way helpful. Um, I don't know if you wanted to say anything else about, about that, uh, sends again, Elizabeth's question. No, I think, you know, you've answered it quite, you know, in a very, very good way. And I just wanted Zamo um, to just jump a little bit back and take a step back to the issue of burnout. Um, I've experienced, I think it's because of the field that I'm at, and a lot of people that are on this call work with people and you have to manage people and be with people on a daily basis. The concept of compassionate fatigue, which also comes from habits, you know, how much you give yourself to people and the idea that because of the space that you're in, and I mean, most professional spaces require you to engage with people where you, you, you have to give yourself, you know, to people so often and you have to, you know, be um, compassionate to people. And I've heard quite a lot of people say to me, they just socially fatigued and they are, they are experiencing compassion fatigue. Is this linked to burnout in the way that you have been mentioning it? Well, I guess one of the things that it, I think it is, and what it allows me to say is, are there different types of burnout? You know, can you be burnt out 
in one area or arena of your life and, and not so much in the other. You know, can yeah. you find yourself actually um, being able to carry on and, and live a, a, a personal life or professional life as much as possible? So as soon as somebody comes to you with a difficulty, whether you're in HR and it's, I don't have any leave, or you're in a kind of um, a therapeutic session and somebody's sharing something difficult, could mm. you find that all of a sudden when that happens in particular, you're unable to cope? And it doesn't make sense because you're not very fatigued, you're still waking up, your appetite is fine, you can still find enjoyment in other things. That has your ability to be compassionate run out. Mm. Um, and I think that you can hear, I'm, I'm kind of answering it with, with, with some sort of, a, of course, absolutely. Mm. And what, what, what part of you has been burnt out, you know, even from a distinction between a, a burnout from home and it's just been Mother's Day and how many mothers mm. will resonate with the fact that even though Mother's Day is so delightful, the idea of being with family can be so exhausting and the enthusiasm and excitement that used to be there has mm -hmm. been gone um, and you'd much rather escape to work mm -hmm. and a lot of people do which can be to further burnout or is it the opposite which is a burnout from work and you just feel better when you're at home and you never want to to leave home there can be different types of burnout and understanding what yours is and where it is is so very important. I wanted to say maybe one thing um, about compassion fatigue, which is maybe not prepared for this session. You see, a lot of us make it a habit to be compassionate and kind and empathic to people, and we call it a profession. And the really what we've done is we've, <laughs> is we've made a habit of it. Um, and almost everybody on this call has yeah. made a habit of being kind. And you've not recognized that you've made a habit of being kind. And I think just pausing and saying, well, if you were to know about yourself, that you've made it a habit to be kind to people, how can you help yourself? You know, how can you instill a, or institute a lot more kindness in yourself? How can you recognize the work that is in kindness, the um, exhaustion that comes from kindness, which I think most people on this call recognize and therefore how can you be deliberate about making a habit of being kind looking after yourself and the kindness that you mm -hmm. that you particularly have mm -hmm. um i think is the one thing that i would say about compassion um, and as well maybe maybe one more thing is that compassion mm -hmm. can often i used to say compassion can feel like a glass of milk you know it could be so helpful it can be so nourishing and really it is and it can also run out oh. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it can also run out. And yeah, I think and it's I, so helpful. Mm. And thank you for bringing up the Mother's Day because I, 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 you know, I know there's a lot of parents here. And sometimes we feel guilty of, you know, getting burnout, burnt out in that area. And for some people, they, it, 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 it's not even a reality. Like, how can I possibly be burnt out as a parent, you know, um, this is something that is natural. This is something that, you know, I'm supposed to be able to manage. But the reality is that we can be burnt out. And this is key for me, Zamo, um, based on what you've said. We can be burnt out in certain areas of our lives. And it is important to understand what that is. Sometimes you might just tired this could just be physically or this could just be mentally or this could just be in certain spaces you know you could be find yourself in a religious space and you're very energetic you're happy you find yourself at work you feel like you cannot do this and you can't carry on and i think zamu thank you for that and i think it's something um, very important to note because if you can realize which area of your life you actually burnt out then you can do something about it or you can attempt, or you can try, and know where to find support. I mean, I want to kind of left one of the way something that you're saying, Sizgila, which is you, a, a burnout can arise from a good thing that you do routinely um, as well. You know, you if if and I, I was saying kind of something about about a kindness and, and it's parenting, and it's sometimes people even feel you know when you're burnt out from work, you're also oftentimes a burnout from something that you experience as a good thing because it's good to work actually. Mm -hmm. And even that can be burnt out in the same way as sports and um, people, athletes can get burnt out even from a good um, yeah. in, 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 in many ways. 
I'm thinking I'm aware of time and the fact that we have eight or so minutes. And I, for the for the pleasure of everybody on this call, I actually just wanted to list five ways that I think things that you can do to help um, start or initiate good habits and mm-hmm. five things that maybe can be helpful to think about in, in stopping or reducing certain um, habits, which I haven't spoken about um, around the difference between stopping something and reducing it. Something may be a bad habit just by its frequency and not in and of itself. Though, though I won't have time to get into that today. Mm-hmm. So if we yeah. started by saying a reflection and a recognition of the importance of habits, where your habits are from the small things that you can look at, then we can, that's the first thing. The second one is, okay, cool. How do you start? And then the third one is, how do you stop? These five things are not going to be revolutionary. Most people will know them, but it's so helpful to remind yourself. And I would encourage everybody to do this every May. In the same way as in January, you set goals. In May, it can be such a great opportunity to imagine that you're midway through the year. It's a great opportunity to revise and review where are your habits and where are your goals. It mm. just allows you to give yourself almost a mid-year review um, with no consequences. Mm. One of them mm. is the importance of setting clear goals, right? Defining, being being very specific, making certain that they're achievable for you and make sure that your goals are also measurable, which will help you in setting the realistic ones. Mm. Starting habits. Starting small, breaking down the habit into smaller manageable steps. Starting with tiny achievable actions which increase the likelihood of success. Starting with tiny small actions which increase the likelihood of you repeating them. Mm. And then you can build on a momentum. Third mm. one is the importance of establishing routine until the routine establishes itself. And here you are incorporating the newly built habit into your daily routine or your weekly routine or whatever routine that it needs to be incorporated to. Choosing a specific time or place or cue that will remind you until it becomes autonomic or unconscious. Using, excuse me, rewarding yourself. And this is the ability to reinforce the habit positively by rewarding yourself for each successful implementation. You know, I see a lot of people on Strava, or on social media, posting after a workout. And I see a lot of people kind of rolling their eyes to that. And I think what is missed is that for the person, the reward were the endorphins after the exercise. Mm-hmm. Though they, it was also the dopamine rush of being able to post and saying, look, I achieved something. And those people are rewarding themselves on social media or on platforms like Strava. And then the last one is staying consistent. Consistency Mm. or discipline is incredibly key in forming Mm. new habits. Committing to this practice, um, committing to practicing this behavior every Mm. single day, even when you do not want to, is important in trying to build the discipline and set the habit until you don't have to anymore. So even though I've rushed through them, I just want to repeat some of the goals and some of the habits, some of the ways to start good habits. Set clear goals, start small, establish a routine, reward yourself, and stay consistent. I wonder if you wanted to say anything to those things, asking questions before I think a bit about how to stop some other habits. No, Zamo, I think, you know, we, we also want to do the, the app demo so that everyone can get to have a, a, an opportunity to um, engage more on these conversations. And I think, you know, for us to build habits, and this is just the right time to speak about this, is that Please when I first founded the October Health app, that is when I thought to myself, this is what mental fitness looks like. This is the habit that I want to continue doing. This is the habit that I want to continue continue having, you know, um, and that is taking care of my mental health and being conscious about my mental health. Um, And this is the app just for that. So um, I'd like to please guide everyone that is on um, firstly downloading the the October Health app. I know quite a lot of you already have the app, but if you do not have it, can you please go to your app store um, and download the October Health Mental um, Health app? And you can just go to your app store, your Play Store, um, and search for Join October and you should see um, black and orange October Health app for download and I will just demo it for you. Lizelle, I might need your help if I struggle with sharing my screen here. 
but I'm just going to share my screen while everybody is downloading their app. Um, can you yes, we can see. Awesome. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. So once you have downloaded your app, um, what you will see is this. It's a welcome page where you will then be instructed to create an account. Now, if you are affiliated with Ask Nelson with Kayelo, you would click on create an account with a partner. However, if you're not, if you're a dependent or you're somebody that isn't, um, you know, associated with Kayelo as it stands, you can create an account without being a partner because this app is free for everybody, you know. Um, but if you do have an, a, an Ask Nelson account or you're affiliated, please do um, click on uh, create account using Ask Nelson and make sure that you use your work email so that you can get all of the premium benefits, okay? And then we are going to create the account. I will just add my email address. Then I'm going to add my password, which is something that um, you should be doing as well on your side. Okay, and if you're struggling, please do let me know on the chat box. I am here with you. And then if you want to be kept updated, please do click here and also click here as well to agree to the terms and conditions. And then you can just go and press create account. What this now does is that it, it takes you through your, to your email so that you can verify the app. So you cannot continue through this point if you have not yet verified. So at this point, we go to our emails and then we click on verify, okay, which I'm going to do now. So once I have verified, I should be able to continue. And if you haven't received the email, just press resend email, then you should be fine, okay? Awesome. And then if you, like Mandy says, if you're still downloading, let us know and we can pause just a little bit here. Um, after you have verified, just press continue. Okay. We're going to give it some time. And this is now where you choose, right, what you identify with. So I'm a female. I will click on female. Um, between 25 and 34, this is the age that I'm going to click, okay? And then here are the relevant topics. So I'd like to say for you to please take some time after this session to really sit down and think of what are some of the topics that you're interested in so that we can create a specialized journey for what you need most, okay? So for me, what would be important for me is anxiety. I think I made it quite clear <laughs> that even building habits is anxiety provoking for me. So this is something that is quite important for me. I'm also very interested in fertility issues. So this is what I'll click. There isn't a limit to how much you can click here. So that is why it's important to always go back and check um, so that you can click um, the correct thing. You can then write a name that is suitable for you, something that um, resonates with you. It does not have to be your real name. I actually encourage that you use a pseudonym so that you feel comfortable sharing um, through these sessions, so that you feel comfortable speaking and you know just talking about anything that might help you and your mental health. So I will just write here, um, MHP lady, because that is what I resonate with. Then next, this is where now you will choose your profile picture. You can choose any one of the icons here so that you remain anonymous, okay? And then you can just select these so that you get email notifications um, as well as mobile notifications so that you don't miss anything. And then you save here. The app asks you how you're doing every time you come in. Please answer this honestly, because this will help to guide in terms of which sessions might be um, fruitful and beneficial for you. All right. I am aware of time, but this is how the welcome page will look like. 
currently we've got a session running by Marku um, Coaching Corner with Marku. But when you go on to um, you know, our sessions, you will then start to see that we've got sessions running every hour for about 20 hours in a day each day that you can choose from, that you can um, you know, engage with. And some of the topics that we do speak about is habits. Um, if you are struggling, again, I am still here and I'm going to be here for the next minute or two. But um, I hope that you have all find, found it easy to download the app and that, um, you know, it's something that you will be able to use. And can I tell you that this is by far the best mental health app that I have, um, you know, come across. And that is why I'm even part of this great initiative. It is free even for your dependents, even for your friends and for your family members. And all the people that host these sessions are mental health professionals. Imagine having a mental health professional at the palm of your hand all the time. So I really hope that you use it. And if not for you, share it with other people so that they can get the mental health assistance that they need. Thank you so, so much, everyone. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Thank you so much for that, Suzil. And um, I'm just aware that um, Mandy has just written here, you know, please let us know if anyone is still busy downloading or if you had any problems, um, we're really happy to to assist in any way that that we can. And again, to echo what Mandy is saying, you can add up to three dependents yes. under your profile um, so that we can all lead mental health together. Um, yeah. I'm going to stop there. I want to thank everybody for being present. Um, Liesl, I think you're going to have the last word. Yes, thank you so much. Um, Zomu and Zenzi, what an amazing, fruitful session. I mean, I was sitting here and listening, and I must tell you, you've given me some homework to do, so thank you for that. And um, as I've listened to you, I thought to myself, you know, I think my main challenge was, you know, if you want to break a habit or there's specific goals that you want to achieve, I think, and I think a lot of a lot of our listeners will resonate with me. I always think that I have to make these massive changes, right? Um, I want to lose weight. I want to get fitter. So now I have to go on the strict diet and I have to exercise three times a day. But it's not really sustainable, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's about, you know, applying those strategic. And it's, as you said, start off small. Yes. You know, it, it makes me think about a captain, um, you know, navigating a shift. Like that slightest turn in the wheel can make, you know, such a big difference. It can move the entire ship. So it's about starting off with those small um, changes um, that allows you to, to, to keep that consistency. Um, and at the end of the day, you will reach your goal. So thank you so much for giving me that homework and some things that I need to reflect on to better myself and maximize myself. And I think that's the amazing thing about the human experience is that only we can be honest and true to ourselves um, mm -hmm. and we can make the change, right? So thank you so much for a wonderful session. Thank you to all of our listeners. Um, and thank you for sharing the live demo on the October Health app. For those of you who are Kylo clients, um, whether it's um, Kylo Health, Kylo Gap or Ask Nelson, um, if you are struggling to download the app and register um, as part of the Ask Nelson um as part of our Ask Nelson partner, please do reach out to your client relationship manager. We will gladly support and navigate. And for those of you who want to find out more about the Alkylo, can I support you, um, please note that this webinar will be recorded. It will be made available onto our Kala website, where you will also then be able to locate contact details to reach out to us for more information. We are over time, but it just shows what an amazing session. I'm really looking forward to next month. So thank you all for, for joining us. Look after yourself. Take care. Um, Till next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.